Start there and three, two, one. Good morning, Mackie. How are you? Hey, I'm doing pretty good. How are you doing? You know, a uh, little tired, but uh, it's it's been a it's been a long week. But I think I don't know. I think I'm doing all right this morning. I think I'm doing all right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the mornings are always a struggle. I don't know. Even if you're a morning person, I don't know what it is, but it's just like, especially on the weekends. The weekends are just like, ugh. Yeah, I, you know, and it's funny because like normally, you know, I wake up, I have to be wor at work at, you know, just literally an hour before we're here today, you know, so it's yeah, not that it's not that bad. But, you know, because it's Friday, I choose to stay up later. <laughs> True. It, it's crazy. Like, like I typically wake up around like 530, 545 in the morning, mm -hmm. but somehow the weekends happen and like it just gets turned on its head. It's insane. I've always been like that, you know, I've very, been very much the same way where it's like, you know, it's the motivation to like get up during the weekend is not as much. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's just insane. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. My bed, my bed seems to be a lot more comfortable at that point in time. Oh God. Yeah. Glorious sleep. <laughs> you know, uh, my, my mother always told me when I was a kid, she, she always never understood me. She's like, you have a love hate relationship with your bed. Like you absolutely hate going to bed, but you never get out of it once you're there. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. That's true. Um, yeah, but yeah, man, no, welcome, welcome on to the show. I'm happy to have you. Um, mm -hmm. you know, this is, uh, this is an exciting opportunity. I feel, I, I almost feel kind of selfish a little bit because, uh, you know, we, you know, I've connected, we connected on social uh, a little while ago and, uh, it was actually through another podcast that you were on. Um, and it was where you were sharing a little bit of your story and, and I'm just like, man, this guy's like, what is it about this guy? Like, like this guy's got some sort of story to share, you know, and, uh, you you have a great social interaction. You have a great following. It's a you have a lot of people that love you out here, and it's a it's an absolute treat to have you on here. Oh, thank you, dude. I'm honored yeah. to be here. I'm like uh, I love the opportunity to talk to people, and you seem like a really cool dude. So I was like, it's win win. Hey man, I think you know like we have these personalities on stream. We're content creators. We do this, but it's always like you know there's always nice. It's always nice to know the genuine story, the genuine like just ha having a conversation behind the scenes. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. Um, I absolutely fell in love with podcasting a few months ago. And so this is, uh, this is, you know, I'm excited, man. So, uh, kind of let's, let's jump right into it, man. You know, tell, okay. tell the audience, you know, uh, those of you, those of y'all who don't know, uh, who Mikey is kind of tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I am a 40 something year old dad, husband. Uh, I've got two kids or they're teenagers. They pop in on stream sometimes, um, uh, I've had a rough life growing up. I uh, I grew up in the projects. Uh, my dad left when I was like five, six years old. Um, mm. And growing up in the pro, my mom was not the greatest of moms. Uh, she did the best she could within the the what she had, mm. but like, um, grew up in a really tough environment with drugs and violence and everything else going on. Um, going to an inner city school and bullying and getting beat up constantly, whether it's at school or coming home and one of my mom's boyfriends beating me up. It was just like, really? Mm. <laughs> and then um, learning to somehow persevere through all that. And then um, I had a suicide attempt when I was 20. So that was like an eye opening thing. And I'm just kind of grazing over this. Yeah, we yeah. come back and yeah. revisit some of it, but like, uh, yeah, man. And then I met my wife around like 22, and uh, things kind of like went a completely different direction, and like started a family, and like I had this new fire lit under my butt at that point, and from that moment on, I just started pushing hard, and um, I didn't have a college education, I didn't have anything else. All I had was my work ethic. And that work ethic just pushed me forward. And to where I'm at now, I live in a, a nice house I built three years ago. Uh, I live in the suburbs out in the country and uh, I have great kids. My wife's awesome. Uh, so it's, uh, and here I am. I've been streaming for like about uh, a little over two years. It's been mm -hmm. up and down like anything else in life. Um, it, the main thing, it's not been about the financial aspect, although that's really nice. Right, right, uh, right, right. Absolutely. The The thing that has really helped me with this is um, 
being exposed to different people from different cultures around the world that have the same love affair for gaming and everything else. It's just been very, very inspiring. And like every day I'm like shocked in all of like people in general, whether it's um, something I see in on social media, something I see on streams. It's just like, I, I, I'm almost addicted to it. I'm shameful to even say that I'm almost addicted yeah. to go on there yeah. and like be inspired by something I see that helps me in my real life. Yeah. So. I mean, that's a, I mean, that's, that's, and that's, I had no idea what I was getting myself into when I started streaming, you know, um, I didn't think, you know, in the beginning I started following people just cause I was supposed to, but then, right. you know, more recently I'm like, man, who actually do I want to see on my timeline? You know? And, um, there's some amazing people out there. Uh, it's, oh, yeah. you know, and I just think that it's funny now there's been a huge paradigm shift, especially, well, in the past couple of years, but especially with COVID, like how popular gaming all of a sudden has become. And you're starting to see a lot of big celebrities hop in the scene and all of a sudden people aren't nerds anymore. And all of a sudden it's the cool thing to do, you know? Oh God. It, it's weird. Like when I was growing up, it was all about the jocks mm -hmm. and, and now that whole scene, like you said, it's a shift and especially now with COVID, it's like, I can't think of a better opportunity to get into content creation than right now, yeah. because yeah. there's no movies coming out. There's no sporting events. There's no concerts. There's none of that going on. And mm -hmm. it's like, then the last couple of months, people being quarantined, everyone's consumed so much content that now there's nothing left to do other than live content or podcasting or other stuff. And it's like people are starving for something new right. and like you got to feed the beast. So it's kind of like, yeah, I mean, and um, I even had a, a friend post on uh laugh. He posted on Facebook the other day. It was like, uh, he's like, we've literally run on our way through every single Netflix show. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> People are struggling out there, man. So, um, no, it's a, it's a great, it's a great opportunity. I just, the, because even, you know, I'm 28 and it's like, even, even when I was a kid, it was still that same culture that you talked about was very prevalent in my school, you know, and yeah. I, I never felt comfortable talking about gaming. I never felt accepted. I never felt, you know, when it came to anything like that, all, all I wanted to talk about was the triple kill I got in Halo last night, but I had like two people I could talk to that about. Right. Yeah. It's like, uh, like I'm gonna date myself saying this, but like, <laughs> uh, I used to play street fighter. I play, <laughs> I'm a, I'm gonna sound really bad. Cause I'm gonna sound like a particular streamer here. Uh, I used to, I competed back in the day in the Blockbuster Championships. I like that. <laughs> and, I like and, that. In the early nineties. <laughs> <laughs> but it was in because I live in the Midwest. So there was like the Midwest like yeah, yeah, yeah. finals, whatever. And I played in like Street Fighter and NBA Jam. So like uh <laughs> I mean I tell people that they think I'm joking, but it's like it was literally a thing back then. Yeah. Yeah. But um I did stuff like that. And like, you tell people that what you did and like, it was just like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So it's, it's, it's come a long way. I mean, it really has. Cause even with, with my family, like it was very similar. It's like they, you know, they, they were raised a very different way and, you know, mm -hmm. gaming was still like right around when I was a teenager gaming, like, especially in the game I love, you'll hear me talk about Halo. That's, Halo's my game, but like Halo was really in its grassroots when I was like about 13, 14 years old. Um, and there was an opportunity for me to compete. Um, but I was never comfortable asking my mom, like, you know, can I go compete with a bunch of strangers I met online in Dallas? You know what I mean? It just wasn't a conversation that was, they were going to, they would be willing to have, you know? Yeah. Cause it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's weird now with all my gaming, it's just like, you could just do most of it from home mm -hmm. and it's insane. It's, uh, I remember asking my mom about going to <laughs> going to blockbuster to do my competitions. And she's like, yeah, what are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it was weird. We were just talking literally in my discord. We were just talking about blockbusters, um, back in the day, how kids these days will not understand what it really meant to be at blockbuster right after school on a Friday to get the newest release movie because there was only 10 oh. copies. 
Like, yes. Yeah. The craze. Yeah. It was insane. That also when games came out, because they always came out like a couple of days later after it was released. Mm-hmm. And they would only have like two copies. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, you better get in there. And then you, if you didn't see it, you hope to get up to the front desk and maybe someone had it and then just returned it early yeah. by chance. Did that and ever happen to you? No. <laughs> no. We hoped never, every never time. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. I still did it. You had to. You had to. Yeah. Awesome, man. No, it's, uh, I, lo- I love talking about stuff. Gaming is like, like you said earlier, it's what brings us, you know, it's what brings a lot of people together from just about every walk of life. You know, um, yeah. it's, it's a common pair. It's a common bond. It's a common, you know, passion. It's a common thing. And I just think that like, it's so cool that I think it's what brought us all here. But as we continue to grow and as we continue to persevere and walk through some of these fears, we start to really understand what our role in this world is. Oh yeah, you know? it's uh, and for gaming, it, it gaming means so much to different people for different reasons. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, like I said, I grew up in the the projects, yeah. so like, gaming was my release because I couldn't really go outside because everyone's beating each other up or shooting or drug dealing or whatever. Mm-hmm. So staying inside was what I had to do, and uh, playing some video games, whether it's Zelda or Cat Castlevania or street fighter it was uh my thing so it's but to someone else uh that was like their escape to get away from something in their life and so it mm-hmm. means means more something emotional from them or sometimes it was just like maybe someone had some anger issues and they could just take it out on that versus mm-hmm. take it out in real life so like i said it's it's multi-faceted on what it really means and it brings us all together so it's like I, someone could be from like Europe and someone else could be from Dallas. Someone else could be from Ohio. Yeah. So like, but they all love gaming for a different reason. And that's what brings, that's what's such a beautiful thing about it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy to have friends. I have friends in Australia. I have friends in Europe. I have friends in all three time zones or four time zones, five time zones in the United States. You know, it's, oh, it's, yeah. a, it's a wild thing. Like we, we used to like have to be, like even when I was growing up, like dialing overseas, that was like a twenty dollar phone call, you know. And now we can just like hop on a stream or like hit them up in a DM, and it's just like, just like that. Yeah, it makes you wonder what's coming next. I'm honestly like, I feel like I'll tell you, you, know, I want to hop into your story here real quick, but I feel like this generation is what, like me personally, I was built for, like the whole like staying at home and <laughs> doing doing this like building content and. Uh, you know, the 5G that's about to come out, you know, that just there's a lot of things that I feel like we're on the cusp of that I'm just like, uh-huh. okay, like this is about to be really cool. Yeah, it's like I, I, I totally agree with live streaming too. It's it's the next evolution. Whenever I explain uh about live streaming to someone who doesn't understand, I'm like, dude, you've got a whole generation of people that grew up on YouTube. So now they don't care about regular tv they care about live streaming or right. uh vods or something like that so like yeah. that's you're starting to see the transition from uh people cutting a cord to this and it's just like dude yeah get ahead of it it's crazy to see like because we have our own like we're in we're so ingrained in this ecosystem it's like but it's nice to be able to you bring up a good point being able to like step back and be like look at what's actually happening here you know mm-hmm. i'm playing a small part i'm a cog in the wheel you know, um, but look at what all these cogs are doing together in unison. It's just special. It is. You know, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, so you mentioned like, I really wanted to touch on like, it was a lot of your childhood, man. Like, you know, you mentioned growing up in the projects, like where, where did you grow up? Like what, you know, kind of tell me, I guess a little bit about like being raised by, you know, a single mom, you know, and like what that was like as a kid. Uh, it was rough. Yeah. My my dad left when I was like five or six. Mm. He was a, an alcoholic. Uh, before he he wasn't that bad in the beginning, from my understanding. Uh, but towards the end, and uh, I remembered a lot of stuff vaguely. Um, so there was um. There was some abuse there. I take my camera for us. Yeah, a little. Looks like I did a little bit. Um. There we go. Huh? That's weird. Uh, we weird. we can let me see. It's, I'll keep that other part piece going, but we can 
Go ahead and, uh, go ahead and leave and come back. It's actually going to keep the audio recording, and I'll actually mix it together. See if okay. that works. See if that works. I can also switch. Uh, or switch okay. cameras. Yeah, I can switch cameras. Let's see. So leave the session and come back? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and leave the session and come back. Yeah, just try that. What's up, podcast? We getting that audio. We getting that video. We can we get it all fixed. Take a little coffee break. Right about right about to get into it. Mm. I like it. Self discipline scientists. <laughs> uh, looks like the audio. Hold on. Uh, no, it's. <laughs> okay, no, no worries, man. <laughs> what would a, what would a, I mean, this is, uh, if y'all are ever in my streams, um, this is something that, uh, is a common problem whether it's it's mainly audio with me uh the uh audio is my literal kryptonite <laughs> i feel for okay okay better yeah. there we go all right crap <laughs> bro i was just i was literally just talking into the recording i said every literally every single stream i have some sort of audio issue every single stream it's it's crazy yeah 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 but yeah man so and we were like out like right into it and then it then it kind of cut out. Like, <laughs> so, yeah, Dang man. It. Yeah. Uh okay, I'll start I'll start over here. Yeah, um yeah. but yeah, I I grew up with the projects and it was rough. My dad left when I was like five or six, and he was an alcoholic and he was stuck in a relationship that he didn't know how to get out of. So his coping mechanism was to drink and mm. um he, uh, towards the end, it got really bad. Like he would take random trips to Kentucky. Uh, I'm from Ohio and he, he had family in Kentucky. So he'd take these trips to Kentucky and every now and then he'd bring us with him. Uh, and the last time I remember going is probably the worst. And, um, he was drunk one time and he put my hand on the table upside down like this. And he took a knife and was going in between my fingers. Oh wow! As a, as a game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then he missed, and he got me like right about here. Um, and then I remember not too long after that, uh, he, my mom and dad got divorced. Uh, I don't think that played a role in it because my mom didn't really know about it so much. Yeah. She just thought I, I got hurt messing around. Uh, out in the out in the country or something like that, but like um, uh, when he left, my mom couldn't handle it emotionally, so um, she had a mental breakdown and she tried to kill myself and my brother uh, by putting us in the oven and turning wow. <laughs> turning the fire off, but turning the gas all the way up. And put a blanket over us because she thought this it'd be better off we'd be better off going to heaven than staying there and having to deal with everything else so wow. <laughs> i was like six seven years old at that time um lucky enough luckily enough my grandmother lived uh across the street and she had just gotten a note from my mom and ran over just in time somehow got inside the house stopped her and then she took off and um came to her senses and uh my grandma didn't call the police or nothing like yeah, that yeah. uh so we were going through rough times my dad was the main bread brother winner 
and that's what let us go to the projects. And um, when we got there, like she still like she never it, it felt like she never had really good coping mechanisms even going mm -hmm. on beyond that. Yeah. So like uh, from that point, me and my brother kind of like raised ourselves to a certain extent. Um, she tried the best she could within the limited knowledge she had. Yeah. So there being moments where she'd be great, and then there was moments not so great. And being a single parent living in that environment, she was trying to uh, better herself by going to college, uh, but she would never finish. She would go yeah. and change. Uh, she didn't didn't have the right support system in place to like help her going forward and. Um, she just kind of like withered around a little bit until she finally settled in a career. But like, it was rough. It was like not having a father figure in the house and the father figures that would come in um, were not that great because she had a habit of bringing in the same guy. Mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. was either a drunk or an abusive person. Uh, so there was a lot of abuse uh, through them. Yeah. Um, so whether mostly it was all physical or mental abuse. Yeah. Um, and I look back at those times, and it, like at the time it was rough, you know? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But I look at those times now in hindsight and I'm like, I'm, and this is going to sound twisted when I say this, but like, I'm almost thankful yep. that time frame happened to me because um, had it not gone, through that, I, I wouldn't maybe not appreciate the life I have now. Yeah. Um, because I, I firmly believe like uh, one of the biggest things in life that uh, is huge is drive and hunger. And I had a drive to uh, not be, <laughs> not live like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I had a hunger to like, if I had started a family, not to be that way. So, yeah. um, it's when you go ahead, go ahead. yeah the, what yeah. uh when you're when you're raising kids they have a tendency to do one of two things they either accept or they rebel <laughs> so it's uh, <laughs> and you see that like pete's like two kids can be raised in the same household and come out completely different yeah. because they either choose to accept or they rebel they either accept the violence that's going on in their household and continue it or they rebel against it and do something opposite. If they live in a nice household, they either choose to accept it and keep going forward, or they rebel against it and go sideways. Yeah. Uh, so it's, I chose to reject that life and uh, rebel against it. And it's got me pretty far. Um, my turning point uh, mentally, I talked about this in another podcast. Uh, was I befriended a guy in high school and we went forward and uh, I had a girlfriend at the time. I'd been with her for like four and a half years and we were all working at the same place. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a time where I found out they were messing around with each other. And he turned it, it, the bad part was he was my manager. Oh, wow. Yeah. So oh, wow. it was uh I'm kind of like monologuing here, so I, no, I'm no. sorry. It's okay. No, no, no. That's that's the idea. That's the idea. Yeah, but uh, my, this is this leads to my turning point in my life. Uh, I um, I couldn't handle it emotionally, and having to go in every day at work, and I couldn't quit my job because uh, at the time I had a crappy car, and mm -hmm. I, my place of work was only like. 15, 20 minutes walking distance. So it didn't seem, it was like the perfect job for the situation. Yeah. But yeah. not a perfect job considering the circumstances. Um, so one day I decided to take my life because at that point um, I felt like no one cared. I had no friends. I had nothing. Mm. So, um, and I was living with my mom. I was 20 years old. And I didn't have any future prospects going on. I had nothing at that point. I didn't have no one to talk to. And I took a bottle. Uh, I found a bottle of Jack and a bottle of sleeping pills. And I downed them both. Um, for whatever reason, I woke up 
uh, and moan vomit and everything else. And yep. I woke up sideways and I was still alive. And I'm like thinking to myself, like, geez, I can't even do this right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I yeah, laugh. So I good. laugh because there's some there's some truth in that in my story. So I just wanted to make sure. That was... Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I got, I got even madder, and then like I cleaned myself up, and like I felt like a loser at that point. Mm -hmm. And oh, yeah. one of the big things I used to like to do was like I like to go driving, just to drive, roll down, especially in the summertime, roll down the windows and just go. Yeah. And that's what I did. I would just go, and then I stopped somewhere, and I just told myself, you know what? I'm not going to let this happen to me. I, I'm falling down the same traps that my mother went through. And here I am. I'm allowing someone else to dictate my future. And they're, they don't even care. They're just doing their life. And I am yep. just, and I'm allowing them to live rent free in my heart and my mind. And I'm like, no, not today. I said, to, what happened last night? Uh, that part of me died. And now the new person is born and I'm going to, live a better life for me and i did that i started just looking at things from a different perspective not so long after that i quit my job and got a new car and all that stuff mm. um it didn't happen overnight per se but it it took it took a lot of work a lot of effort um and eventually it all paid off yeah man i mean thank you thank you for sharing that uh and literally the reason i i laughed uh, part of it's because like, I feel, you know, I'm a, you know, I'm a recovered heroin addict myself and I've been sober for almost coming up on seven years. And it was a, wow. it was Good a view. Thank you, man. It was, um, you know, it's like, I have to like, in order for me to, it's therapeutic almost to like laugh at some of the most tragic moments uh, of my life. You know, um, there's been, you know, there's been multiple times where I should have, you know, not made it out alive. You know, there's been multiple uh, times where I've, I've taken way too much and should have not woke up, you know, and uh, it's really, you know, it's fascinating to hear something, something like that, because it's a, I had a very similar, like, awakening moment when, um, you know, it was probably one of the best things my family could have done for me. Uh, they intervened on me uh, when I was a kid, or not a kid, but I was uh, 21 years old, and I literally failed, it was like a 11 panel UA, you know, drug test, and I failed nine out of 11 of them you know, all at the wow. same time. And wow. I was 120 pounds and, uh, they were like, basically you go to treatment or we're going to take, we're going to stop paying your rent and we're going to take your car. You know, cause I was this tough guy having it, but behind the scenes, my mom was paying my rent, you know, and they bought me a car and like, you know, but no one else knew that, but I was this tough guy who, you know, sold heroin on the street, uh, you know, to kids in sober houses. It was just a, it was a vile, it was a vile thing, but I looked them dead in the eye and I told them to go fuck themselves. You know, um, and that was literally as painful as that memory in that moment still is. It's exactly what I needed because they abandoned, you know, it, well, they, they made good on their promise. Like they were very strong and they had really good guidance and they, they left, you know, and they took the car, the rent payments stopped coming, um, you know, and literally four months later, uh, I found myself seven grand in debt. Uh, we, me and my girlfriend had an eviction notice on our apartment and I was like 118 pounds and uh had no money in the bank account i was like i had that moment where it was like it literally hit me like it like it through all the bullshit through all the you know the mental insanity it was like in that moment it was like i fucked up <laughs> you <Yeah>. know <laughs> like, yeah. you know and you just like i can that's why i laugh at that because like there's there was that moment where it was like that i i understand that turning point where it was like all of a sudden everything is clear as day. You know, it was like, the, it's like the sea parted and there was no insanity. There was, it was, there was the most, that was the most clear I'd ever been with myself. You know, it, it's insane when that stuff happens. It's almost yeah. like, um, I'm trying to think of a, there was a movie where a guy took a pill and everything became like crystal clear. And, um, I know what you're talking about. I know I exactly what it in my head, but like, uh, but yeah, th th it was kind of like that. It was just like, boom, the light comes on and it's just like, oh, okay. Yeah. Now I know what I need to do. Well, right. And it's it, it, like, I think that people, it's not a requirement to be, to have a checkered pass and to have a rough pass to like be a very effective content creator. But I feel that the people who have, you know, the people who have that or who have had that have the ability to make the biggest impact, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Because 
I was talking to somebody about this uh, the other day. I think most streamers, if, even if you're if you're a big time gamer or whatever, you should always start your chat out with just chatting, yeah, of some sorts. Um, that's allowing you to see how your audience is doing, uh, let them know what's going on in your life, uh, get a gauge of how they're they're feeling, so you can kind of go forward. Um, and to me, like this should be like a good learning experience for taking like moments of your life, whether it's funny, whether it's dramatic and like using that to help people, especially like right now, right now people are lost mm -hmm. because they're scared. They don't know what's going on. They can't really, we just future is uncertain with a lot of things, but it's like, yeah. uh, people are, are wanting to get something out of it. And someone who's been through the shit is going to like, uh, really know, you know, what to do, you know, they're going to turn to those kind of people that's kind of been through it. And how because does he, yeah. Good. You, you get that look on your face where it's like, this guy, this, this girl, they, they've been through it. So it's like, I'm going to turn to this person for like guidance to a certain degree. Well, it was just like when I got sober, it was like, you know, many people who had never walked a, 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 a foot in my shoes were telling me I needed to get sober. And it's like, why would I believe anything that you, got, you guys are saying? Like, why? You know, like, have right. you have you even experienced a, a morsel of what, you know, like, have you tasted a morsel of what I've had to walk through for the past six years? You know, and but I remember when that person did come along, there was a very strong like confidence in that person. And it was even though I didn't like it, I listened for the first time. You know, I because yeah. they not only had they done what I did, they went farther down the scale than I did. And they all of a sudden like for whatever reason we're happy and i said what the fuck is wrong with you you know, <laughs> you know what i mean right <laughs> it was like a it, it, it was it, it startled me it disturbed me because it was like there's no way that this person is this happy and is literally the same person that i was you know yeah it's it's insane like that's why i always tell people there's an audience for everyone mm -hmm. because everyone mm -hmm. has been through different experiences in life and that reflects in your stream yeah. so like uh, what my my journey was may not reflect someone out there, but there's people out there that it does affect. So, but there's say there's you and your your background and your history that might help someone else, or right. may the audience may gravitate towards that. And it's it's insane. It, that's why I encourage everyone to get into doing this because it's it's almost selfish in a degree sometimes because it's uh, sometimes I feel like, like you were talking about earlier, sometimes I feel like you get more out of it than the person mm -hmm. in your audience mm -hmm. because sometimes it fulfills a need within yourself. It's you're like, exactly like, right. By giving to a certain degree, like there's I, my community I have uh, sometimes we would sit back and do um, uh, roaming raids so mm -hmm. what we would do is we get a bunch of people in voice chat and then we'll just sit there and talk and then we'll just pull up uh different streams and we'll all go into that stream old school raids man yes yeah yeah and they would just go in there and just talk and like the like the response that would, some of these people would have they would start crying some of them would just be happy and of course their numbers are going to shoot up for whatever reason i mean with all of us being there but like uh their emotions and the way I felt when they were so happy and thankful. It's just like, I got something way more than they probably got out of mm -hmm. that. So I think that's, there's a lot of that going on in the streaming world and content creation where you, you almost feel guilty at times where you like, you get more out of it than the other person. I feel guilty because I, since COVID happened, my life has dra like has exponentially increased in happiness. Like, I almost feel guilty, like not only yeah. just in streaming, but the yeah. podcasting, you know, my, I have an aggressive dog and like, I've been able to, you know, she's dog aggressive. And so I've been able to be home literally all day to reinforce her behavior. Um, she's made mountains of progress. I've been able to crush it at work. Like, I feel like there's like so many different things that like have been waiting for this moment to actually happen. Um, yeah. and it's like, you're like, I, I do feel a sense of guilt at times, um, and even when I work with other alcoholics, you know, or other drug addicts, it's like, it literally says that, you know, in the, in the program I work, it's like, you know, you need to let this person know that you're actually getting more out of it than they are. Like, this is, 
I mean, this is what, this is what's required, you know? And this is like, it's literally the dope of the program. It's the, it's like, this is like the best part of it, man, is being able to do, being able to participate in small moments like that. Yeah. yeah. It, the, the part of it that's kind of addicting is, uh, I find it spe specifically on social media. If you can go on there and, uh, I'm probably most known for my, uh, motivational or, positive post and pizza post uh, and pizza post that's <laughs> that's an, another thing yeah i even got i saw it pizza, i pizza saw letter. it <laughs> <laughs> yeah um my wife's sick of pizza by the way so <laughs> yeah. but uh, uh yeah there's um uh there's a bit of like selfishness on my part it's not so much the engagement when it comes to the post it's when someone says you know what dude i i needed that today and thank you so much that kind of like i was feeling really down and like that helped me out get me through the day when i see stuff like that i'm like ah i need to do more yeah. i need to do more right and it's it's even if it's just like one that's enough for me it's uh and then you want to keep going you were inspired by that and it's just like Oof, okay well it gives a, it it, it provides like i think what you're, you're touching on a good point is that like you know it that that type of energy is almost intoxicating when that happens. Like yeah. it, it's literally the best feeling in the world, you know. And I, I think people get so twisted in the fact that like they have to change who they are to be like someone else that they look up to to succeed in content, you know. Yeah. And it's the exact opposite. It's literally yeah. the opposite. Like uh, I remember when I first started streaming, um, I would I kind of put on an over exaggerated version of myself, mm -hmm. and I would get views or whatever interactions, but it was like afterwards I would get off and it would be like, yeah. I felt more happier in like when I would sit back and just come on and just be me. If I was having a bad day, I wouldn't necessarily reflect it completely, but I would just be right. like, you know what, dudes, it's been kind of a crap day. So uh, let me tell you about it. Yeah. Or, if I was feeling really good, I'd, I'd put it all out there. Um, but the thing was, is like your audience, they want something real. Mm -hmm. And whatever your real is, identifies with somebody else. Like I was talking about earlier, everyone has an audience. And some of it is geared towards somebody else. Some of it's not. But like, if you're just your authentic self, when you turn that camera off, you'll feel a lot better. And yeah. you won't feel exhausted. Um and at the same time, you'll have more genuine connections with other people. So it's kind of like, well, yeah. and yeah, and, and and what I what I think is it's also really cool. If you you bring up a point, like I never thought that I, you know just because people were on the internet meant that the connection could not be genuine. You know what I mean? Like it was yeah. you know, like internet friends are not real friends, and like that was what I what I was conditioned to believe. Um, you know, and it's like the the fact is like the same principles it doesn't matter whether you're behind a screen or face to face with someone these are like timeless principles that don't it doesn't matter where you are it literally it has no relevance you know yeah it's yeah it's it's right there it's is you you by being authentic if you're having a shit day and it's like you know um other people are going to be relating to that or you never know like i can you know, there's been sometimes where my audience is like, when I've been like that, and they've said something, I'm like, oh, thank you. <laughs> you know, um, they've actually turned the table um, to help me out. Yeah. And it's just an amazing thing, man. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I have to, I have to turn, I have, like, I have to, like, focus on the, the pizza. Like, what, you know, <laughs> you, you, this is part of your brand, you know, like, at the, at this point, like, what, what, what is that about? Like, <laughs> well, I have to ask. See, it's, see, I this is gonna be weirder when I say this. I love um, it. I have a lot of food allergies. Okay, so that forces me to like a window, and that window <laughs> is typically where pizza lies. <laughs> uh, and uh, like, uh, all right, I have like I'm allergic to seashell fish. I'm allergic to soy, which is a pain in the ass. And probably the worst of them all is poultry. Oh. Oh. So my my options are very narrow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And this this started when I was really young. I would eat something and my throat would swell up. Uh, back of my head would start 
itching. It would, it my I would get a sharp pain in my chest. Uh, wow. And yeah, it was bad. I've been tested and all that stuff. So like, and you'd be surprised how much stuff has soy in it alone. So uh, there's an artificial soy that I can eat called a uh, soy lactine, which mm. is used a lot. Um, but um, yeah, that's kind of like I was very limited in my options. So it was always like a lot of red meat yeah. or pork. And then after a while, it was kind of like, I'm tired of that. And like, yeah. uh, there's pizza. <laughs> and pizza hits like a lot of like different things it's got. You can have it so many different ways, you right. know? Thin crust, thick crust, deep dish, uh, different toppings. <laughs> uh, in fact, I just tried um, pineapple on pizza for the first time. And? So I didn't mind it so much. It's... Uh, right. It Like, well, it, it was weird, like... Everyone had this weird, like, the only caveat I would sit back and say about that is the longer it set, the soggier it became. Yep, yep. Which was the consistency part of it was kind of weird, but, um, because I, I made a YouTube video about it and, uh, and I kept like, I was, as soon as it came in, I was like, I gotta do this video real quick and yeah. I gotta shoot it. And they were like, uh, I was like, okay, let's hurry up and do Cause I didn't want to wait. Yeah, yeah. I didn't want it to cool off. So, but yeah, it, it was not bad. It was like, but it wasn't like, to me, it was not mind blowing either. It was kind of like, it is it was pretty is. good. Yeah. 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 I, you know, I think I, I'm a, I'm a, I've always been a pineapple on pizza kind of guy. Like it's not literally like my, my favorite pizza in the world, but I will, I will always defend it, you know, to the death. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, yeah. <laughs> I think it's just a weird, like there's, it's almost like tribalism. People like like to pick sides and like right. defend it like to the death. And it's just like it's pizza. I mean, it's <laughs> to me like I I can't think of a pizza I would never turn down, except for the anchovies. I don't think I could. I don't think I could handle that. But um, no. yeah, dude, most pizza I would never turn down. And even if it's bad pizza, it's kind of like sex. It's like <laughs> even if it's bad pizza, it's still pretty good. So <laughs> it's still pizza. <laughs> Yeah, it's still pizza. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, wonderful analogy, yeah. man. I like that. Yeah, so it's it, like I said, it, it. I started talking about it one time, and think I think what took it over the top. There was a content creator that posted a kind of a lewd picture, and I was messing with her, and I took frozen pizzas and put them in the bikini top and posted that picture, and then after <laughs> that. It kind of like took a life of its own at that point. And all of a sudden pizza was part of your brand. It's constantly like, yeah, like I would, I was saying it in a jokey manner. Like if someone said something, I would throw out pizza and like it, it's funny. Like when you start doing something that's associated with you or your brand, it, it's funny how like certain things kind of like take off Yeah, and you don't think about yeah. it and kind of like snowballs. So pizza have like, me and pizza are like synopsis together. So it's kind of like, I don't know. Bro, you are still, evolving pizza. Yes. Yeah, so I'm like, I'm waiting for like, uh, one of the, the big pizza people to come at me and want to sponsor me. Yeah, bro. I think that, I think you get, they so, got it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, it's not like you, it's, it's not like you wouldn't promote it without a sponsorship. Cause you already do. <laughs> like, yeah. Like bro. <laughs> they'd be I, I, to. Right. And I take pictures of my pizza. Like, <laughs> I'm some kind of like uh, artsy fartsy kind of guy. And I'm like, yeah. yeah, look at this pizza. Like I'm on Instagram or something like that. And I'm like taking pictures of it. And people are like, dude, I see the pizza. I just ordered one. Yeah. So I'm like, dude, where are you guys at? Hook a brother up. Right. Can you imagine the day when we're able to send pizza through Discord? You know what I mean? Oh, like, God. like <laughs> teleported or something? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that'd be uh, that'd be great. I would see. That's the thing about that sucks about COVID right now is like TwitchCon and mm -hmm. all the other like uh, conventions and stuff like that. I I've never been to one yet. Um, Me neither. But from everything I've heard, is like people that go to it, they come back with this like love and stuff that happens because there's so much love that goes on in those events. And I'm like, I want to experience that too. It's like. And I can only imagine going somewhere like, hey, let's share a slice of pizza and a beer and let's have a chat right. with someone that you've commonly talked to. And like, 
it kind of brings it full circle. Circle, yeah. It's, it's special, man. I'll tell you because that's how I got. You know, you know, like a brief, a brief part about like when I got started was like I wanted to get into esports, and I remember going to my very first esports event. You know, in uh, New Orleans in 2018, and it was like, oh my god, there are a room full of people that are just as jazzed to be here about the same thing as I am. You know, and it was that that is. I, I preach it all the time, like as much as online connections are vital and it's, you know, it's completely nice. And there's a way to be a human on Twitter. There's a way to be a human on Twitch. There's a way to like be a genuine person, make it as human as you possibly can. But there is nothing that beats being able to see someone in person after you've met them online and literally carry on like nothing ever happened. Like, like it was like the first time you met, it was you're like, you've known each other for years. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's I'm mm -hmm. looking forward to that day with like a lot of a lot of the people I've connected with via social media or or streaming or content creation altogether. It's just to me, it's probably I'm imagining it's going to be overwhelming. Yeah, I yeah. have like social anxiety, but I'm probably going to put that to the side for right. the time being. And uh, I'm sure, like after the fact, it's going to be like, ah. Well, that's what's funny about gamers is like, you know, you get you gaming conventions are are such a, a paradox because you get a bunch of socially awkward people like by the thousands in the same room together. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's uh, it's weird. <laughs> it's like I, I, I don't like going to the mall. I don't like going to like big areas of like mass people, mm. but I can only imagine it's just like I'm going to like go into a convention like TwitchCon. Um, with like a crap load of people experience the same thing. It's gotta be weird. Yeah. Oh, it is. Uh, PAX was probably the weirdest because everyone's got different interests at PAX, you know? And so at least in an esports event, like it's a smaller condensed area and everyone's there for the same yeah. game and you know, it's more common ground, but when you get, like you were touching on earlier, game, gaming means so many different things to so many different people. And there's so many different elements that mean different things to people. And so you get that, that is a true melting pot because you're just, even though you're all gamers, there is there is so much diversity spread out through those arenas. You know, you got the D, &D oh, yeah. players, you got the mixer streamers, Twitch streamers, you know, uh, you know, uh, FPS shooter people, D, you know, uh, World of Warcraft. I mean, there's there's just like there's so many different things going on at the same time. It's almost kind of overwhelming. Yeah, you know, it's uh, I'm looking forward to it. I know, yeah. I, good. I hope hopefully these things, uh, COVID calms down and we yeah. can uh, get back to normal life and yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. So I want to, I want to, I want to bring this back to your story, man. This is kind of all this podcast is about you anyway. <laughs> That's the idea. Uh, you know, when it comes to, you know, be, like you've been doing content for a little while, you know, you got two kids and you have a wife, like, you know, what does that dynamic look like? Like, what does the support system look like? What type of, I guess it's, yeah, leave it really open. What does it look like? It's rough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It's, uh, like at the hardest part, I think for most content creators, you can't go full time for most of us mm -hmm. because typically the ones that can go full time are like the top 5% or whatever it mm -hmm. is. Uh, so most of us have to work a job. Um, the job I work, I make, uh, I'm a machinist. I make uh, surgical tools and orthopedic implants. And recently wow. I was making parts for ventilators. Um, so I was working a lot. Uh, yeah. And last year, my wife lost her job, so I was putting extra hours in. I remember that. And that all was happening, and uh, I felt like at, at some point, I couldn't catch a break because it was like, I'd start streaming, wife lost her job, so I had to pick up hours. Mm -hmm. And then, like, uh, start working again. She was doing a temp agency, and then two weeks in, let go again. Ugh. Yeah. Start working again. It was a holiday season, so I'd even had to work harder. Um, she started to get a job in, she got a new job in January. A couple of months later, COVID happens. And it's like, and then we're making respirator parts. And it's like, <sighs> got to work more hours. So it's been, it's been a struggle. And the main struggle for me is like trying to find balance. Um, trying to find that balance between work, uh, my wife and kids, uh, sleep and pizza. Mm. And, uh, it's like, uh, 
trying to find that um, i kid about it but it's like uh <laughs> yeah. it's yeah. it's hard i mean we have conversations about it all the time where like um i i try to keep up a social media presence as much as possible in the mm-hmm. in the meantime when i'm not streaming um when you're streaming or making content whether it's podcast or whatever you're devoted not only like people see what you see on screen but there's stuff off screen with editing and putting oh, yeah. stuff together and planning and talking to people and networking and everything else that is involved with it it's very it's very consuming and for something that probably doesn't pay a whole lot with wow. the amount of work that you put in for anyone that looks from the outside you're like dude i just see what you do here i don't see the background stuff that's right you should you should be able to just get on there play your game walk off go hang out with your family and it's like it's not that it's not that easy um and then my wife is very understanding about it uh but there's times where like she's like can you stop for a little bit can you <laughs> and <laughs> this is gonna be funny uh this past like two days ago my wife had an event at her work and I, she invited me to go with her because it was like a dinner and she told me um can you not talk about streaming because <laughs> she's like Every time we go somewhere, you talk about it. I'm like, well, that's other than work and you guys. I mean, that's part of my life. Like, yeah. it comes out. Yeah. And so I had to refrain for a little bit and then eventually end up coming out anyway. So, like, because <laughs> someone asked me about it, I'm like, well. Now they see, honey, they asked, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. So, like, but the balance, it, it, it's rough because, uh, like, like I said, there's a lot going on with that. Then you have your kids, my my daughter's in volleyball. Both my kids this fall will be in high school. Wow. So you've got all the events, dances, prom, uh, pictures. Mm-hmm. Dating is weird. Uh, yep. Yeah. So it, it's, it's a, it's a struggle. And I, the, I, I try to blend. It's funny. I try to blend my life as much as possible. Yeah. And it, and it's rough. Uh, it's I just you just got to take it day by day, hour by hour. And what I might suggest for anybody who's going through this, um, when you're off this, when it comes to content creation, when you're away, you're away. Yeah. Don't don't think about it at all. Yeah. Try not to anyway, and devote your time to your your partner or your your kids or whatever it is on the outside make it about them 100% because if you try to do anything halfway, well, it's going to be rough. Thank you. You've had a few experiences with that. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I have a hard time. Like, like I said, my, I've driven my life through work ethic. Yeah. So like there's times when like, uh, I have a desire to do something. I can't turn it off. So when I'm done with this, sometimes I'll go upstairs and I have my phone out and I'm thinking about stuff and I'm like, because one of the things, <laughs> a little secret I have when it comes to Twitter, um, I'm constantly thinking of stuff. So I'll type something out and then oh, I, you go to delete it. You could save it to your drafts. Yep. So I have like a hundred things saved in my drafts for potentially things to post. Cause I think of something in, in my head that helps me get through the day. And because I don't want to post like a million times a day. Right, 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 right. I post like, you know, like maximum like four or five times a day. Uh, but I, I'll save that and maybe someday something will trigger that that particular post. Like, oh, I remember this seems relevant right now. Yeah. So yeah. like what, what's going on, this particular post would fit this day perfect. Let me move this, put it here. So I'm constantly thinking about that. I'm thinking about, well, I wouldn't mind doing a podcast and do this. This would be great. Or I could do this. And I'm like, I've got to stop. Yeah. (laughs) It's got to stop. Well, I think part of it's because, like, we, you know, you can, I can obviously hear it and obviously see it. uh, You know, like, this is something you, when you, when you love something a lot, it's hard to have it not literally consume literally every waking moment of every hour. You know, it's, it's your drive. It's your passion. It's like, uh, and, Maybe it's the addictive aspect of it, but right. it's like you you love not necessarily the, the attention you get, but you love, like I said earlier, you love making people happy. Um, 
and it's addicting. And when it comes to like, especially go, what's everything going on in the world to make people happy. It's just yeah. insane. Cool. And yeah, I, it's, I think like, you know, something that I wanted to touch on, man, like, I think, you know, I know, I, I know my generation understands. That. I know, I know for sure your generation understands what well, I can appreciate it. It's like, I, I sit there's sometimes where I get hit with these moments of emotion where it's like, I get to do this. You know, and I think that's almost most of my drive. Like I love making a difference in people's lives, but like the fact that I get a shot or an opportunity and that there's so much accessibility for me to build a career based on something I love that much. Oh man. It literally brings me, it brought like, I look at one of my montages that a friend edited for me and I just, I broke down into tears like four times every time I watched it. You know, it's like, Brilliant. this is like something that I get to do like a hopeless heroin addict once now gets an opportunity to literally build a career off of video games. <laughs> right. And it, the crazy part is, is that I feel like all of us as content creators, we're chasing that blow up moment. Yeah. Yeah. Where like, uh, you're, you're able to like blow up and go full time. Yeah. And not have to worry about finances or anything else. But you're able to step in and be like, okay, this is my career now. And I could fully say that I'm a con full time content creator. That's what we're all chasing. That's the dream. And not only is just that, but like you're making a difference in people's lives, you're doing something fun that you love. Everyone is chasing that dream. And it's just like, it's weird. It's, but I'll say this being in, in this world for two and a half years, it's it's really interesting. The longer you're in it, the smaller it becomes. Amen. Say that one more time. The bigger, I mean, the longer you're in it, the smaller the world becomes. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, I like I said, I've been in there for two and a half years, and I've gotten people that I've seen early on blow up like now, and yeah. now they're like huge, and to be around to see the transition of stuff has been amazing. Uh, and your name, the longer your name's out there, you're doing stuff. That's the thing I always tell people. You may not feel like what you're doing right now is meaning anything, but the more you stay at it and keep pushing forward and keep putting out content, your name's going to get out there. And the more you do it, it's just like, um, Harris Heller's editor, Sam. Yeah. Yep. There was someone that was talking in the chat and I popped up and I said, hello. And someone was like, oh, you know, Mikey Perk. And he said, oh, yeah, I remember that guy. I know who he is. I'm like, he knows who I am. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> oh. Yeah. And then like and not too long ago, I had someone uh, by the name of uh, Alinity follow me on Twitter. Oh, wow. So that was a very interesting moment. So, <laughs> yeah, I've got some interesting people that follow me on Twitter. But it's like those moments like there, it's just like uh, – I'm actually, people are noticing stuff like the pizza's working. <laughs> That's right. It's what like, is it? Is it the pizza? Is it the, is it the story? What is it? Right. What the hell is it? It's yeah. the pizza. It's gotta be the pizza. Cause right. it's sure, sure. Hell ain't me. So like, <laughs> oh yeah. 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 It's, it's pretty amazing. I've had that recently. It's been, you know, like my, my following count hasn't shot up, but like I've been noticing the people that have been following me lately. It's like, oh wow. Like, yeah, this, this is really, this is really cool. You know? Yeah. And you know, the funny part is the more you get to know some of these people who are bigger, like full-time streamers and stuff mm -hmm. or content creators, it's like, they're just like everybody else. They have the same issues and everything else. Exactly. They put on their pants the same way, same way. And like, they had the same problems. Like mm -hmm. there's a couple, a couple of them I've talked in DMS and it's just like, dude, they, they don't have the same problem, same fears, same, like, issues with balance and everything else in their life. It's just crazy. Well, I think it, I, you know, I think that's a, a fantastic point. It's like we, you know, I know personally, there's been a lot of people that I looked up to, like, you know, I'm typically in the more esports realm. Like I look up to people like Ninja. I look up to people, you know, like I, like I, that's one of my favorite creators. Cause he was, he was honestly, uh, he was a halo pro before he ever became a Fortnite star, you know? And so to see him come from that grassroots and like literally, like, it's just, I don't personally like Fortnite, but it, for what he's done, I have to respect it. But, oh yeah. But at the same time, we forget that when they get all this fame and they get all this like cloud and they get all this notoriety and it's like, 
there's still people. And I think, I think people who are striving towards that have a hard time looking at them as still a person and not this like mystical figure that doesn't have emotions or a heart or, or right. that, you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it's weird. It's like, they see them as this like superhero in a yeah, sense. Like an enigma. And it's, yeah. And it's like, no, they just farted 10 minutes ago, bro. <laughs> and it's like, and they enjoyed the smell of it too. <laughs> yeah. They just picked their nose the other day and like <laughs> their spouse or their partner got grossed the hell out or yeah, like, yeah, they have some weird fetish about pizza. It's just weird. <laughs> and it's just like, um, yeah, it, like I said, man, it, that's what's the interesting part. Like, I can't even fathom getting to that kind of level. Mm -hmm. Like, I know back in back in my day, <laughs> um, I did esports in its early stages, yeah, and yeah. Uh, I went to a LAN party in the early two thousands and played Quake in Cincinnati. Oh wow! Yeah, yep. There was a guy there that became famous, and his name was Fatality. Hmm. And I played against mm -hmm. him and I'd never thought like down the road that he would end up becoming what he was. And, uh, he kicked my, he kicked my ass by the way. <laughs> uh, yep. I'll never forget that either. But, uh, yeah, if I ever see him again, I want to rematch. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's crazy to see that evolution. And he became such a mystical thing in the t early mid two thousands that just kind of like is, but he was the same, he was the same dude back then probably the same dude just had more money right so yeah I, I it's just it, and i i because i you know i love like you know like how like striving towards this blow-up moment it's cool but also at the same time like i think there's there's such a it's such a lost art to like fall in love with the process of getting there you know what i mean like it's yeah. you look at people that i and i and i don't envy them i look at people that win the lottery and have no concept of how to manage their money you know like it's almost it's almost like i feel bad for them because it's like they're going to blow through and be bankrupt. You know what yeah. I mean? And almost every oh. single one of them has, whether it's depression, suicide, bankruptcy. Like it's like when you get thrown something and you're not mentally or experi like experientially prepared for it, like what's going to happen? You know, like today, if I blew up and had like 6,000 followers in my stream, I literally would freeze. I wouldn't know what to do. I don't know how to manage a chat like that. I've never been through the experiences of like dealing with trolls at that level. I've never, you know, so it's like, I, 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 it's like this fantasy land of like, man, like I just want to blow up. It's like, no, what do I need to do to evolve myself to get like slowly experience this? Because that is such an, I've gotten rated by a pro player once. And even at like, even with like 250 viewers, you know, like I was just like, <laughs> You know, like I, did, I, didn't, right. I didn't know how to handle it. And most of them left. And it's like, I think that was a great indication of like where I was at. You know? Right. Well, I would like to liken that to working out. Yeah. When you see someone like bench pressing like 400 pounds. You're like, dude, let's go <laughs> jump on the bench. <laughs> Almost kill yourself. It's yeah. like, right. It's like, you got to start off small and you got to build your way up. You start off with like, you know, 75 pounds and, get yourself up and get up to like a hundred, like 25, 150, right. 200. And it takes time and it takes like getting your form down. That's the thing. It's the form. Mm -hmm. So when you're doing your thing, it's just like learning who you are, your brand, your structure, your content, learning about yourself so that when those moments come, you don't break. Right. Right. So, yeah. And yeah. And you, you, you hit and hit the nail on the head. And like, I, it's something that I personally really believe in. It's like, you know, I think, and I work, you know, I work for a company where I help small business owners, um, you know, literally create their business from the ground up, you know, and it's, uh, we provide a lot of resources and tools and it's, it's fun to be able to share the limited experience I have here to be able to help them. I said, look, like, obviously I'm not like a serial entrepreneur because like, I wouldn't be working for this company and speaking to you if I was, but what I do believe in <clears throat> is experiential knowledge and to, um, you know, when it, when it comes to, oh, I completely lost my train of thought. Um, but, um, wow. I cannot believe that actually just happened. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first time it's happened now. Um, you know, but to, to be like, people value the experience over any sort of like, just like random knowledge bomb. Like I'm not an expert in all these different industries, but it's, it's cool to be a part of that journey from the beginning to literally put in the work and to you know be able to handle that success when it does come because 
you know, I believe in taking things in in like bite sized chunks, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, if you if you if like if if the if the bite is too large, like I'm gonna crumble, you know. And it's right. oh, I know what I was getting to. I I went a way roundabout thing. You know, I t- what I tell them is that you know running a business is easy, running a brand is easy, but walking through your own insecurities is the most challenging part. And I tell people like that are always looking for the answer from me, you know, where I work. I'm like, I'm like, you're the one who has the answer, but you have so much layered insecurity and so much layered fear, you know, that is preventing you from making that decision. And that's the journey I believe of this. Cause like once I get past, I'm like, bro, I thought I had that thought a year ago. Why am I, what am I so scared of? You know what I mean? Right. So, right. I don't know. It's a, it's a fascinating thing that like we have, I believe, re, I believe at my core that humans have the answers. Like we know what we want. We know exactly what, yeah, we know exactly what we want, but it's like the journey of knocking down those walls and those barriers. And like, that is the, that's the hardest part. Cause once I grow individually, all of a sudden everything else just like simmers out and it just fits and it just, you know, meshes and without any effort on my part, like, Oh yeah. That's not simple, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's insane. Like if you stay the course, do the work, and just put in, ex- learn and learn and like, like the one thing about content creation that people don't realize is like learning all these different skill traits that you don't yeah. have. No one has Bro. all these skill traits. <laughs> yes, yes. And it's like, uh, you're not gonna know that right away. So editing. Oh my God, I'm terrible. Uh, graphics, it, it's awful, <laughs> but it's yeah. like, you got to learn it. And yeah. like, yeah. especially early on, cause you don't have the finances to do everything else. So like if you're, it's like a business, it's like, okay, I don't know how to do this, but I'm going to have to put it together and um, somehow, somehow survive. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, cause I, I buy all the, you know, I'm a, an Adobe subscriber and it's like, half of those tools I don't know how to use, but the fact that like I have enough power under the hood, whenever I do get to that point, that's what I love about those. And you know, it's all, I literally use the most advanced technology for the most basic shit. (laughs) Like (laughs) it's kind of silly, you know? Yeah. But cool, man. So, you know, want to, want to kind of wrap things up a little bit here. Like when it comes to, you know, when it comes to your journey, man, like you're, you're here, you're now like, what is, whether it's with streaming or outside streaming, what is like the end goal for Mikey Pert? I'm a, I'm a big time believer in something. And my belief is uh, the secret to life. Mm. Uh, the secret to living is giving. And my goal is to um, give as much as I can to the point where like uh, when I'm done, when I'm done doing this, um, I, I've helped people and I am not, I, I, I don't want to die and I, and no one not leave something behind in that mm. sense. And it's not just like my kids and my wife and all that. Um, I want to leave something behind to where people, when they say my name, it rem- is remembered. You think about like, uh, like the story of 300. Yep. And what they did, it transcends time because of their name. And I think to myself, like, if uh, if I could do something like that, when my name is mentioned and it's invoked and something is brought up of, like, positivity, probably pizza, but, like, <laughs> <laughs> everything else, it's like, you know what, man? When that guy mentioned something, it really helped me. It stuck with me at this one point, and it got me through some tough times. And I would like to shake that guy's hand or... I like to say thank you or something of that nature. That's a, that's my end goal. Like, the, yeah, I would love to go full time and make crazy money and like yeah. buy a lot of pizzas and stuff like that. <laughs> it'd be, it'd be, it'd be great. But at the, at the end of the day, like I'd be extremely happy to leave a lasting impression of like um, helping a lot of people yeah. as much as possible. I like that. Like leaving a legacy, you know? Um, yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm with that. I, I love that. It's the first time I've heard that on the podcast. So I absolutely love that. Um, well, you think about this, this is, is circling back to my past. Mm-hmm. My dad, you know, he, he lives in Kentucky on a mountain with a horse. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Yep. 
And my mom is living in a efficiency apartment by herself. When they pass within a generation, no one's going to know who they were because they didn't right. do anything beyond just surviving. Yeah. I don't, that's my drive. My drive is not to be that. And I, I do not, I want to make my impression felt by the end of the day. It's like, that's, that's my thing. That's awesome, man. That's a, that's a great motivator. I mean, that's, uh, oh, yeah. that's a literally sent chills down my spine. Man, that's, that's so cool. Um, I think it's what a lot of us want, you know, at least to some degree, you know? Yeah. so, um, yeah, man. So, you know, kind of like where, where are you the most active on social? Where can people find you? Where is it you, that you want people to go? Um, I am primarily on Twitter. That's where my, mm -hmm. that's my jam right there. Uh, but I'm Mikey Perk everywhere. Uh, Twitter, Twitch, uh, uh, YouTube, uh, Instagram, everywhere. I'm like, even other pages. I'm Mikey Perk. Uh, <laughs> uh, so it's like, yeah, I'm Mikey Perk everywhere. So if you need to find me, I do search Mikey Perk and I'm right there. I like it, man. Brother, it was an absolute pleasure having you on today. Thank I, you. I really appreciate that. That was, a, that was a great, this is a great one. They, dude, thank you so much for having me. This has been really fun. And anytime you want me back, I'm, I'm more than welcome to come in. And I think there's, I think there's some, I think there's some more conversations we could have. Um, oh, that yeah. would, that'd really be good for the podcast. <laughs> yes. Yeah, man. Yeah. All right. Well, let's, cool. let's go ahead and sign off and, uh, you have a great rest of your day, man. You too, man. Yep. See you. Awesome, man. There we go.